Say something negative about your favorite game. I'm so sorry to do this to you as well. (laughs) Do it. Dump on your son right now. (laughs) What up, kids and squids? Welcome to the Nintendo Everything podcast, episode number seven. I am your host, Oni Dino, and with me, I have the lovely Eric Zouch. Hello everyone, later on today we'll be hosting a funeral for Sonic. He was recently revived in Sonic Mania, but unfortunately, he's dead again. (laughs) I'm sure he'll be revived and then die several more deaths. I think he's got more uh, lives than a cat. Oh, he he has way too many lives. He's, um... Although, I think Sonic Mania was really the first time that he kind of came back. Although, I won't blabber on too much, because we have another guest joining us today. Ah, yes, we do. So, we have a very important person joining us today. Uh, He is a lifelong Nintendo gamer and an avid collector. He's two meters tall, and he's as gentle as a Goomba. Please join me in welcoming to the show, Galen. Hello, hello, hello. (laughs) So, what is going on here? What's this uh, three-man podcast happening? Eric, you want to explain? Yeah, so I've got a little bit of Spain to do here. So a few weeks back, um, I let Brian know that I'm not going to be doing the video content or really any content for Nintendo Everything anymore. Um, I'm not going to go into detail here, but uh, in the new year, I'm going to start doing my own stuff full time, which kind of meant that I had to kind of stop doing this stuff. Uh, that means I'm probably letting a lot of you down who kind of follow my stuff at the moment. Uh, and it definitely means that I'm letting Brian down and, and only you as well. Um, <laughs> it's, something, it's something that I kind of just had to do for myself. Um, I promise you this wasn't something that I planned. It's, it's rather something that I was just kind of thrown into. Like, trust me, I, I wouldn't have spent hundreds of dollars on business cards and T-shirts and kind of getting everything up and running <laughs> if it was something that... This like I was thinking about doing this in the future as it was, but it was just something that I was kind of thrown into. Thrown into. Um, anyway, I'm not going to promote my new stuff here. I'm just going to say that if you <laughs> if you do want to follow me, just follow me on Twitter. I'm sure you will kind of see it pop up there. And plus, I haven't done any of my new stuff yet, so um, all of this is a bunch of old reviews on my channel at the moment. Um, anyway, <laughs> it's not all bad news because um, after throwing you under the same bus as Brian, only uh, you managed to find Galen to kind of help cover my spot here. So it's that, I think that's kind of some good news out of it. Yeah, yeah. So, of course, we are very sad to see you go, and we are very, very uh, appreciative of all of the stuff that you have done for Nintendo Everything and for the podcast. And without the foundation that you have laid, this podcast would not be moving forward. So, really want to thank you for that. And without further ado, we want to get to Galen. Galen is our new co-host. So, we thought that with uh, the last episode that Eric would be doing, we would do a three-man podcast just to sort of spice things up and usher Galen into the madness that is the Nintendo Everything podcast. I am I am always ready to jump into the madness. Um, personally, right now, I'm looking on eBay for some of those shirts Eric was talking about. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you're going to have to you're going to have to ship from Australia, though. I say, what size are you? Are you a medium? Or, like I can do your deal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll, we'll talk after. We'll talk after. <laughs> God, I would love to see Galen in a medium-sized shirt. As I just said, he is two meters tall. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, moving forward, uh, to get Galen inducted, we thought that we would give him uh, some rapid-fire questions, like Eric and I did a few episodes ago. So, both Eric and I have each prepared uh, five questions separately. And we're gonna we're just gonna roll you right in there, Galen. We're gonna fire off one by one, and uh, you're gonna answer pretty much up the off the top of your head. Don't think about it too hard. Just give your most honest answer from your heart, okay? You got it. Roll it in there. Uh, you know, you guys have been playing a lot of Katamari Damashi, so I'm I'm totally yeah. game for this. Awesome. So, uh, Eric, do you want to ask your five first, or should we do like one you, one me? I think we should do that. I think we should definitely alternate. I'm going to let you go first, and I'm just going to uh, preempt this by saying you've got some completely new questions, which I'm excited to hear, but I just went back to my old list. I did the lazy thing. Maybe it's just my last episode, <laughs> but I just went back uh, no. to my old list. <laughs> no, I'm going to talk myself down here. Um, so I just went back to my old list. I picked out the best questions that I could find, and I've grabbed five of them, and, and you've got five really great new ones. So let's, let's put you on the spot. All right, all right. Well... The only reason I made five new ones is because I'm very sadistic and I really, really would like to, uh, uh, I would really like to catch Galen off guard. So uh, I will start off with my first question. 
Are you ready, Galen? Uh, yeah, I'm all set. <laughs> that was under underwhelming. Totally underwhelming. Okay, ready? <laughs> Here we go. Question number one. Question number one. If you had to be head-to-toe draped in character-themed clothing of any Nintendo character, whom would you pick? Uh, that would probably be Samus. Samus? I, mean, I, I You know what? I, I can't say no to a power suit. I can't say no to a various suit. It's, you know, that's my jam. Oh, good answer. I, I like that, uh, but I would prefer to see you in Kirby gear, I think. Me in Kirby gear? Okay, well, I'll, uh, I'll start looking around. Does it come in medium? <laughs> <laughs> Make sure not to use the morph ball too often. I hear that does terrible things to your back as well. Oh, just awful. Just awful. Chiropractor bills alone. <laughs> Let's jump into question number two. You just woke up on the Mushroom Kingdom. What's the first thing that you do? Hmm. First thing that I would do would probably be go over to one of the uh, blocks and try punching it. Hmm. I mean, mm. it, I'm in a new place. There's new physics going on here. You know, got got to find out how things work. No, that totally nice, makes sense. Nice. And you think about it when you jump into like the first Mario level, you've either got two options here. One, you got to jump over the Goomba. But once you get past that, you either hit a block or you just keep moving. So I like that your first option is definitely to hit that block. You would have found, you would have been one of the people who found the mushroom. Exactly. And I mean, I'm not going to like step on any Goombas or anything. I mean, I mean, that might be a person. They <laughs> live here. I don't. I don't know what the customs are. I don't know where I can get deported to. It's just, it's, it's so much safer. The really depressing thing here is that the uh, the blocks in the Mushroom Kingdom are actually toads, so that would be the person. <laughs> I would really hope that it's uh, secretly Mario too, and then you hit the block, and instead of a mushroom, you get the poison mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> Question number three. If you could create a new Kong in the Donkey Kong family right now, what would their name be? Drowsy Kong. Drowsy Kong. Drowsy Kong, yeah. He's a Kong who lays around, he just sleeps all day, and, you know, he it, become, it makes Donkey Kong kind of a an escort mission, where you have to pick him up, and, you know, there's there's like a new level added on to here of what you have mm. to do in it. I like it. Think in gameplay. That, yeah, yeah. I mean, that was really Donkey Kong 64. That whole game was kind of drowsy Kong, wasn't it? No, I'm just joking. I like Donkey Kong 64. <laughs> <laughs> That was more like uh, Indignation Kong for me, because I did not like that game. <laughs> All right. Question number... Is it four? I think I think it's four. 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 Yeah. Think, think. Think it's four. Say something negative about your favorite game. I'm so sorry to do this for, to you as well. <laughs> do it. Dump on your son right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, it really depends on what I would define as my favorite game. Um... I'm going to go with the game that I have put the most amount of time into lately. That would actually be a non-Nintendo game, and that would be Destiny. Um, and my negative thing to say about that is, oh god, the grinding. Why so much grinding? <laughs> I can definitely definitely agree there. <laughs> Only, can we please open the show too with your the line that you kind of led with there? Dump on your son? <laughs> <laughs> Sure, yeah, yeah. Uh, doesn't that game have a whole bunch of um, loot boxes and microtransactions? No, not so much, actually. Um, oh, but it does it have does it, though, right? Have, it does have it. Um, they're all So there's cosmetic. your answer. <laughs> oh, only don't so be that got, person. We try to defend it now. <laughs> well, you're defending microtransactions? You and I are going to have some tussles right now. Tussle? That's, that's kind of a lame word. Fight. <laughs> okay, question number I don't remember. Will you marry me? No. Next question. Well, okay. Well, yeah, well, well, that one's right off the bat. Okay, <laughs> next question. Uh, question number right after Oni's one, which is six. Um, marry, boff, kill, peach, Zelda, Samus. I'm really glad you asked this question. All right. So, <laughs> overall, I think I would go, what'd you call it, boff? I don't know. I, I honestly, there's not an Australian saying for it, so I just went with I think the the, the <laughs> European one, which is boff. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I'll go with that. I mean, I could say the Australian um, one, but I don't think it's uh, allowed. On I don't think I should. <laughs> I I, w I would have a one up stand with uh probably Samus <laughs> going on there. Um, I would definitely go ahead and marry Zelda. I'm gonna go with that one, and kill Peach. Interesting. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. It was totally different than what I gave. 
So the reason I justified this was you figured I'm not going to tussle around with Samus. That's not going to happen. So <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and have as little interaction with her as possible. And Kingdom Wise, <laughs> I honestly think that Zelda offers more kingdom potential. And Peach, well, I mean, Peach is an easy target. So you said that you would boff Samus, and then you explained that by saying you would have as little interaction with her as possible. You just blew up your own spot. You basically called yourself a minute man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, if I am doing a one-up stand <laughs> with someone, it's going to be her. Yeah, that's not wrong. <laughs> All right. Next question. Describe your ideal video gaming environment. Hmm, that's a good one. Um, are we talking like levels? Oh no, I mean like your personal, like real life environment, like the couch, uh, laying on a beanbag, something like that. Oh, oh, gotcha, gotcha. Um, armchair, definitely got to go armchair. Ooh. Expand on that. Give me a little more, a little more detail. Elaborate. So, my per my personal preference would be an armchair moved out from where it normally sits placed right in front of the television with something to kind of kick my legs up on and just kind of have that all around lounge back kind of fully immerse yourself into it mm. uh yeah nice no specific headphones no specific drink or anything mm, now see you're expanding on it uh drink i would probably have to say just uh fizzy soda like root beer something like mm -hmm. that um mm -hmm. maybe just go basic water you know maybe a nice tea mm -hmm. Mm -hmm headphones depends if there are other people in the house oh uh because you you want to be you want to be uh you just want to be very very considerate of other people on that one so oh, you know what a nice guy people there otherwise just crank that stuff up can we just put out there that like food should stay away from the gaming area as well no food should be interacting anywhere near or around a controller <laughs> uh, that's that's really honestly the correct answer but i love food so much i can't help but just like eat something no <laughs> finger foods around the controller i know it's it's a rule but it gets bent sometimes you have to bend that rule anyway question number eight you can send one console and one game back to galen at age 10 what game and console do you send nintendo switch I mean, hands down, it is <laughs> one of my favorite consoles out to date, and the portability of it. Ten-year-old Galen was going to a lot of places and having to sit around at a lot of places that he didn't want to, so having that distraction aspect definitely would be pretty appealing. I love that, that you said that, although I've been thinking about this question, and every time that I think about it, I think, if you send an HD console back to, like, I, I don't know how old you are, Galen, but I'm going to assume that none of the TVs when you were age 10, would would they would they have HD back then? So you'd have to play it handheld. Nope, we were running off of uh, hamster wheels, and it was those <laughs> fancy moving pictures, so it was just a guy behind a projector, like, changing the slides out, so it made it very interesting for Pong. Okay, next question. <laughs> Why can't Metroid crawl? Do you want the fun answer or the technical answer? <laughs> the first answer off the top of your head. Rapid fire. Come on. A lot of twists. Right. Got to keep up. Uh, back problems. Back problems. I mean, she, you know, and it sounds counterintuitive because she can go into the Metroid is a he, okay? Oh, you got me with that one. All right. Metroid can't crawl yeah. because it can float. And why would you crawl when you can float? Boom. Hmm. I feel like it's going right over his head. <laughs> I feel like as well. Should we just move on? <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Question number 10. Remove three characters from Smash Ultimate. Great question. Uh, ooh, three characters I would remove. I love this because everyone just sits here and goes, oh, wow, can I even remember three characters? <laughs> <laughs> I would probably say Duck Hunt Dog as number one. Um, Lucina is number two. Speaking of dog. Uh, yeah, sorry. I'm having a dog lemma over here. But yeah, uh, Duck Hunt Dog as number one. Lucina as number two. And probably Rob as number three. Okay, now that's the correct answer. <laughs> mm. <laughs> all right, well, I think that kind of does it for all ten of our questions. Yeah, that was it. That was it. Oh, that was <laughs> Come on, you guys are supposed to throw me off my game here. 
I totally threw you off your game with that last question. You still don't even know what I'm yeah, talking probably about. probably not. <laughs> All right, so on that note of what characters would we take out of Smash Ultimate, let's uh, talk about and see if we can remember all the characters that are currently in Smash Ultimate as we talk about our adventure log. I think that probably <laughs> all three of us have been playing Smash, oh, so... Mm -hmm. And really, re remembering characters, there's only one character you really need to worry about, and that's Isabel. Just saying, top tier. Isabel's my main. Oh my god. Have we even unlocked that many characters yet? I don't think I have Isabel or King K. Rool or most of the new characters. So those unlocks, right? Like, okay, talking about that, the unlocks are really hard, aren't they? Like, when they come up, like, every once in a while they're easy, but I found that as I kept going on, uh, every single time a CPU unlock came up with, like, a new challenger kind of thing, it was, like, completely handing my ass to me. Oh, yeah. I couldn't believe what how difficult like, I, it was. I, I don't know if it's all over the shop, because like, sometimes I get into it and it's just like, okay, this is, like, a really easy fight. And then, then all of a sudden the next one is just like, okay, that person just really, your character really kicked my ass. I don't know what happened there. Mm -hmm. Have you guys had any um, characters pop up right after you used a character you weren't familiar with? God, yes. Uh, no, because I really haven't used a character that I'm not familiar with much. <laughs> oh, okay. To kind of go into to my experience with it so far, like I have just been playing nonstop World of Light and like, and when playing World of Light, I've just been playing like nothing but mm. Kirby at the moment because like you start off with him and then like I'm unlocking <laughs> these new characters and I'm like, oh God, I don't know how to play with any of the Fire Emblem characters or I don't know like who how to play with this character. So I'm just, I'm just going to continue playing with Kirby for now and I'll mess around with some of these other ones later. So like that has just been my entire experience basically at the moment is it's almost entirely World of Light. Like I've even very barely scratched any of the other modes because I've just been enjoying that so much. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, so how about this? Let's kick it off. Uh, Eric, you go ahead and, and do your whole experience with Smash and your impressions on it, and then uh, we'll go on from person to person. Okay, so my whole experience, it should be pretty light, because like I said, I've just been... Okay, no pun intended there, although I'd love to intend it. It's just been in the world of light. Um, <laughs> uh, but, like, the world of light, so far, has just been, like, everything that I've wanted from this type of, like, from a single-player experience is... There's no, like there's none of that cheesy storytelling which like I don't really care about. It's got the opening cutscene and that's kind of it. Um, there's none of the platforming mechanics that were in the old ones. Um, there's none mm -hmm. of that. It's just fun and antics, and that's what I kind of love about it. It's just slapping these characters together in in weird combinations that just work and they're just fun and like it's all just kind of clever nods to all the old games. Um, and just quickly touching on the world map as well. Um, it's better than people give it credit for, I think. This, the, just having a world map is like, a lot of people just think, oh, well, what does it really add to the game? And first of all, it adds like a lot of nods to the game, I feel. Like there's a lot of kind of, it's mm -hmm. not just character nods through the, the fighting and this, uh, the, I keep going to call them stickers, but the spirits, the spirits that you unlock. Um, but there's <laughs> character nods throughout the world map as you're exploring it as well. Um, and like, it's like saying, you know, would Donkey, the old original Don Donkey Kong Country be as good? if that didn't have a world map. And, and like, that's a linear world map, and no, it wouldn't be. Like, the world map is partly what gives the game character, and it, 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 I think it does the same thing here. Um, I've been playing also, like, just to, to shame myself here, I've been playing it on easy. Um, yes, I'm, I'm baby mode for babies. <laughs> 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 um, although, like, in saying that, like, just to kind of defend myself a little bit here, it's still hard. Like, maybe I'm just bad at Smash, but, God, like, <laughs> I am still just getting my ass handed to me like so many times like there was a match um i'm trying to think of who it is the boss um uh, from from metal gear and she is just so hard like i had spent so long trying to grind through that fight just i think i eventually got through it by luck but like it's just there's just still matches that are even hard on easy so like if you're the type of person who isn't really experienced at smash and and you don't want to like have a really hard time trust me you still get a hard time out of easy and some of the fights some of the fights like especially early on you're just going to breeze through but they they do definitely even ramp up in hard um now the last thing i want to touch in on here before i kind of let you guys take over and, and have your say is is the spirits um i love it like i love unlocking these spirits i love learning about the backgrounds of all these spirits um i've heard some people talk about like they're not as excited because they don't have the backgrounds that trophies do like trophies one it's an individual kind of pre-made piece of art but also like it gives you a little bit of background on the character and while i would i do like that like i would like a little bit more um i don't think that it's the end of the world like i still enjoy the spirits for what they are um and i mean this whole game just kind of revolves around this fan service that it's just kind of shoving down my throat like every like maybe since <laughs> i've been in the spirits mode so far but this entire game just feels like fan service like <laughs> right down to the bone 
Um, just to give a bit of an example of how crazy this is. Right now, I'm playing with Rayman, a giant fairy um, from Zelda, and Mario Tennis Aces Mario as my backup spirits. Um, oh, that's a good spirit. Is, <laughs> I know it is. It's so good. Um, my main, the, the person I'm playing as, or the character I'm playing with, I don't know why I keep calling them people, um, is Kirby, um, who is battling Shulk in his underwear, um, who is supposed to be looking like Beetle from Wind Waker, and Wind Waker <laughs> has Link helping him out. Um, and, oh, the items are pulled towards Beetle because he's Beetle. Like, this is just like one little tiny scenario in this entire game. And it's just every single one of these spirit fights is just so full of these scenarios. There's, and there's over hundreds of them. It's, it just kind of amazes me, really. So, uh, the last last thing I'm going to touch on again here is um, just my... <laughs> I know I keep saying that, but the, my favourite battles so far. I just want to name a couple of them here. I don't want to go into too many because I almost feel like they're spoilers. But uh, just some of my favourite ones here. Um, so far... I've done a Dr. Wily battle, which is like, in fact, I'm just going to touch on this one because this one was magical. Um, a Dr. <laughs> Wily battle, which you have to first eight Mega Men, or is it Mega Men? I, I don't know at this stage. <laughs> Um, and then you have to first eight of them. So obviously they're the robot masters and you're versing all eight. Um, they're metal mega men, mega men. <laughs> um, I, I think it's a flock of mega men. Yeah, of yeah. course, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, a it's, it's a volnut of mega men, okay? okay. It's a volnut of mega men. <laughs> yeah. How weird can we get here? <laughs> they're reinforcements. So every time one dies, another one kind of comes in to, for you ready to battle the next one. Uh, it's a stamina battle because, of course, they have health bars. So you're wearing down their health bars to kind of work your way onto the next one. And after all eight are dead, so after you've defeated all eight robot masters, uh, Dr. Mario appears to represent Dr. Wily in similar kind of outfit, which is just, it's just magical. Like it's, it explains <laughs> what this game is. Um, and it's everything that I want in a single player fan service game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'm going to take it from there if that's cool, because I totally agree with like almost everything that you said, except for I'm not playing it on a uh, scrub baby easy mode. I'm playing it on normal. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I've been playing a little bit of World of Light, not a whole lot, um, but I got I got into it. And uh, those those matches are so much fun, like just the character that they represent, just looking at them physically and you're like, oh, yeah, it looks looks kind of like them. Oh, cool. I kind of feel like I'm fighting so and so from Fire Emblem. Uh via so and so from fire emblem and <laughs> and the way that they set up the fights is so cool i again same thing don't want to say too many because i don't want to kind of spoil people on it if they're very sensitive to spoilers so i'm just going to say my favorite one because again it was magical as eric said uh and <laughs> mine also happens to be Mega Man related so i was fighting the spirit roll casket that's a uh, roll from the Mega Man legends series and she was represented by Isabel in red and, you know, whatever there, because Roll wears red. And they both have, like, blondy hair, don't they? Oh, she does have blonde hair. That's true. Yeah. I didn't think about it too yeah. hard because uh, it only showed, you know, Isabel. Then I get in the battle and then there's a mini Diddy Kong in there with her as well. And I had, like, a literal half second of confusion followed by pure joy. Like, I scream, scream laughed <laughs> at it because... For those of you who have played Mega Man Legends, and I know that Galen has, um, I don't know about you, Eric. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Roll has a little robotic, tiny, cute, adorable monkey named Data, and he wears like this like robotic oh, like the Data dance. Yeah, yeah, he does like a little dance like when you save, and he's your save point, so that's why his name is Data. And he's got like this like robotic like diaper thing on him, and he just looks so cute. He's got little circles for hands. He's got like the same appeal as like Kirby or like a Waddle D or something like that. Uh, so mm -hmm. when I saw that, I, I paused it and I was like, Oh my god! Oh my god! I'm so happy! Like, there's all these different things that <laughs> you no totally totally. Uh, there's all these little things that you come across um, with these very creative battles that they all put together and they spent time on each single one to give you like these little references for the people that understand it. And it goes way beyond like just references or nostalgia pandering and like, you know, remember this? I clapped. I clapped when I saw it. It goes way beyond all that. It's just a pure celebration of video games. And it's just my favorite absolutely love it, it. it that perfectly kind of sums up what it is as well it's, just, it's like it's literally there for people who just 
like if whether you be a, a new Nintendo fan and, and only know several games or whether you've just been there from, from the start and you just love it and indulge everything in Nintendo every every little bit of you know if you know one of these franchises every time that you see one that you know you, you almost just sit back and you feel like you said you just feel like clapping and just going well done sir well done <laughs> yeah totally agree <laughs> I still hate that song by the way it plays all the time <laughs> Oh, why does it play every time? Uh, every time the game starts up, uh, every time it comes up, I'm just like, oh, okay, yeah, no, I'm like, I've had enough of it now. See, I've infected you. See, <laughs> you have. You've done. You've done. <laughs> I enjoyed that song when I first heard it, and now I'm just like, no, nah, I'm done. I'm definitely on Oni's side here. This is this is just no. Nah. <laughs> okay, Galen, your thoughts? Uh, so I am going to be a little bit of a contrarian on this one. I first off, I think Ultimate is a fantastic game. It is a masterpiece of a tribute like it, it is one of the greatest video game tributes i have ever seen just for the reasons that you were talking about i actually had that exact same reaction on that role fight when it came up like awesome it, it might have taken me a little bit longer to realize that it was data and then i was just Scrub. like oh my god that stupid monkey i'm going to knock it out of here like no matter i don't care if that's the mission i'm knocking this monkey out first but um <laughs> So, personally, I have not been doing as much World of Light. I have been trying to go through, just doing, a, like, a couple of quick one-on-one -on -one matches with a computer, just to kind of, like, get the flow of the characters, see, you know, how it feels different. I've been going through the Classic Mode, I've gone through All-Star Mode, just to kind of see what other things that it offers. I actually feel that having the number of characters that is in there is a little bit of a hindrance to the progression of the game. Oh, it's mm. way too much. It's There's too many freaking characters. It's awful, actually. Oh, yeah. When you officially had to introduce Echo Fighters as an actual thing of even Nintendo's admitting, yeah, okay, this is the same person. They just work a little bit differently. Like, we've tweaked, tweaked a little bit of the stats. That should be a sign that, yeah, you have too many characters on here. With that said, though, it goes back to the whole theme of this isn't an eSport game or anything like that. This is a tribute game. This is there for the fans. This is there for you to have those kind of nostalgic feelings. Just touching on what you said there, I think that's that's interesting, the, the point of there being just like so much characters. It, it was almost just too much because to me, like I, I find this a lot of a personal thing with a lot of games. I almost, I, I'm try to not be, but I almost always have this thing inside me that's like, I'm a completionist and I'd love to try to do as much as I can and complete every part of like every game that I can. Oh yeah, I'm, so, I'm right there with you. Yeah, exactly. And so when a game like this kind of comes around, you're like, I want to try to do everything. And then you realize, hold on, I'm never actually going to be able to do everything in this game. That can be the point where it's just like, <laughs> Okay, that's, you know, that's a little bit disappointing. But, like, again, that's a very personal thing that, like, there's just going to be, you know, if I was uh, maybe eight-year-old Eric and getting into this game and I had not, no other games to play for the next six to 12 months, I'd be like, yes, I'm just going to indulge myself in this and I have so much to do. So, yeah, that's, that's my feelings on that kind of point. Well, and as odd as it was, I'm one of those weird ones that I really liked Subspace Adversary in the previous game. Yeah, see, I didn't. I, I loved it. I loved not... I love being able to branch out beyond just a fighting game and making this into more of an adventure game and a fighting game at the same time. That that was totally my jam when I played Brawl. Or, yeah, Brawl. And even when they came out with Smash 4, Wii U, and 3DS, I actually preferred the 3DS version over the Wii U version because it had that mode where, hey, we're dumping you on this magical floating island, you go around and you collect all the stuff, and you fight all these monsters, and then we're going to give you a random match at the end of the game, depending on what stats you've actually collected. Like, I thought that was brilliant. I would love to see that expanded more. Same uh, thoughts on that. I really did like Smash Run, and I do want to see it expanded more, because as many times as I did play it, and as many times as I did enjoy it, at the very end, I was always like, Okay, this is it. It was the journey was way more fun than the destination, which is fine, mm -hmm. but it's just that the destination was very desolate after I had been there a couple of times. So yeah. uh, I much prefer this this single player campaign, though, over like any of the single players in any previous Smash games mm. ever. Hands down. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and that might just be my personal preference on that one. So it is. And it's the but... wrong opinion. So it's fine. Oh, yeah. You, you, you hate you absolutely hate me. We're going to fight in the comments after. 
<gasps> he listened to the podcast before Eric. What do we do? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> I know all of. I, I've been playing with my Switch modes this entire time, and yeah, uh, it's been great. Oh, there's a throwback. I hate Switch modes. <laughs> Okay, so lastly about Smash Ultimate on this adventure log, though, I'm sure we're going to be bringing up Smash uh, throughout the show, though, just because it is the season uh, of uh, Smash right now. It is the season of Smashing. Yeah. How about favorite characters? Or not, you know, definitively favorite characters, but currently at this very fresh moment in time, what characters are you gravitating towards? Eric, go ahead. Uh, King K. Rool. I haven't unlocked King K. Rool, but like, I so badly want to try King K. Rool because like <laughs> I'm just seeing all this stuff about like him being overpowered and like how how good he is, and then watching his move set, I'm just like, oh my god, I really want to play as him. And since I've all of, only been playing as Kirby, um, it's just been like, yeah, I've just been, I can't wait to unlock King K. Rool. So that's mine. Gotcha. Kirby's really good in this game, though. Like I, I think he's better than uh, Smash Four. Oh, like I'm, com- I'm becoming too good at Kirby now that like I'm just gonna suck whenever I try to pick up any other character, but. <laughs> so for me it's really hard to choose um i've been dabbling with as many characters as i possibly can but for me so far i'm really really digging richter like you you guys have any feelings about richter like i i'm loving his moveset i just didn't expect it at all but like also he's pretty easy on the eyes too so uh that's that's pretty pretty good reason to choose him (laughs) oh those hd graphics yeah very hd (laughs) Ricker seems pretty fun. Um, I just recently unlocked him. I haven't gotten a whole lot of actual playtime with him yet. So, yeah, he he seems pretty good. He, it seems like he's going to be one of those really weird characters. You have to be very accurate because of, like, his... Oh, God, was it? The cross that he throws mm-hmm. out and the his whip has, like, a weird range mm-hmm. to it. But I've noticed that it's kind of like the difference between Roy and Marth where it does different damage depending on what part of the whip you actually hit him on. Mm. So yeah, he seems like a very like precise character that you have to play as. Mm. Interesting. Uh, Maybe I haven't played him enough, but I haven't noticed like that precision on his whip yet. So maybe I need to go back and pay attention. I I could just be, you know, just completely (laughs) (laughs) predicting, oblivious to that one. So it's quite possible too. I'm very surprised, though. I'm very surprised that neither of you said that your uh, favorite character was Sonic. Oh, I think you say Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Two out of ten for segues. <laughs> there was some very interesting news that came up throughout this week. It was just, it was, it was like a a constantly dispensing dumpster. But you never knew when it was going to dispense the trash. And like every time you did, it was like, oh, it's glittering. Oh, I'm so excited. We were just blessed by the trash gods with this this movie (laughs) poster of a silhouetted abomination of Sonic in his upcoming Sonic movie that releases in like a year. Literally, like, I think 11 months from now in the West. November 8th. November 8th. I've already taken time off of work. It's going to be a fantastic train wreck to go watch. I mean, yeah, but, like, I can live a better day than that. Like, I don't need to see this movie. (laughs) Uh, So you only need two hours. You only need two hours. Oh, my God. (laughs) I don't see what the problem is here, guys. Like, I don't know why you're you're shitting all over this movie. I think it looks good. (laughs) (laughs) No one ever said that. Um, (laughs) This is the worst abomination that I've ever seen. (laughs) Like, I'm I'm ready to go here. I'm locked and loaded. Um, But, guys, this... This may be this is the worst poster I've ever seen for any video game movie. Like this, I feel like we've just been transported back to like nineteen was it nineteen ninety three, like twenty five years ago. We're back with like the the Super Mario Brothers movie. We're back then, but like worse, like a lot worse. This Sonic has no place in in my reality at the moment. Like get out of here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> this Sonic has no place in any reality. Like not even DeviantArt wants this Sonic. It's that bad. I, like I, actually I, on that point, I think DeviantArt might want this Sonic because he is basically like he's he looks like he's human. He looks he's human with a hedgehog head. Uh, he has muscle definition to his legs. Oh my god. So much so that like I don't know if he should have that much definition. Like he had he has more defined muscles on his legs than me, which is a little bit weird. Um and like just going like I think this is also weird because it's coming out so close or like it's been shown so close to the the Pokemon movie uh, review mm-hmm. which has uh, been done so much better because Pokemon to this is like is black and white uh, pun intended there um <laughs> that like was Pokemon really good. <laughs> <laughs> I got it I clapped I clapped because I knew the reference <laughs> <laughs> Pokemon did this right like first of all could you imagine like if Pokemon was like oh, you know what 
Mr. Mime, yeah, he's a skinny white dude. Um, <laughs> that's that's how he wanted to play. And he's Mr. a drug Mime. addict. No, he looks like Mr. Mime. <laughs> and he's a drug yeah, like Mr. Mime, use overdose. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't. Mr. Mime doesn't have muscle definition to his legs. Like he doesn't need that. Like they don't need to put Hitmon Lee and Hitmon Chan in there and have like a couple of uh, pro boxers playing them. <laughs> no, that, that's not what they need to look like. They need to look like what they look like in the po- in Pokemon, and that's what Sonic should have done. And and they haven't done that at all. He just looks so hideous yes so uh i'm gonna dial it back just a second here since this is clearly a podcast it's an audio show if you listeners at home have not seen Mm. seen these posters you need to see them so the the first poster that got announced was actually like a i don't know it was like an animated poster or something i don't know quite how to explain it it was clearly like just an image but then they added some post-processing effects to be like a zoom of light zoom of light and then it's just a silhouette of sonic and sonic has human proportions but he has an enormous head he's like a walking candy apple and it's very weird because it's human proportions like muscle like it was like a human that was like a track star that transformed into sonic or something like that yeah he was about to it's like a, a track athlete about to start their race race and then they have they're just a, like a hedgehog head on them mm-hmm. and they're really furry for some reason it's like it's sonic is a is, in, in my reality sonic is basically a potato with a couple of straws stuck into him but in this reality he's basically <laughs> like <laughs> he's basically monsters ink that didn't miss leg day you know mm-hmm. yeah yeah actually that's that's a pretty apt description the other weird <laughs> thing about it too is that like they have him silhouetted so you can't really see his face and so it's it's almost like the marketing team was like, yeah, we're going to tease him with this. Then we're going to do the reveal later. It's going to be great. And it's like, did you not see this coming? Like, Sega, do not tell me that this is seriously your idea. This shit looks hideous. I, I, I think that they are silhouetting him because they know how bad he looks and they don't want to reveal the full image. No, come on. Come on. Like, we have to think realistically here. I don't know. Surely they were, like, winding this up and... and... Like, like you said, only surely they've wanted this up. They, they've blacked it out. And they're like, oh, they are going to look forward to this so much. But sh- again, they also have like teams of people or like people that they have that come through and screen this stuff and they show them and they know what kind of, like they do it with reviews and I'm sure they do it with yeah. this thing. Like I'm sure they go back to, um, even if it's just their family, I'm sure they go back to their family at night and just say, hey, look at this uh, this art for Sonic that we've created. And like, I don't know if they're like, their family's too soft on them or something and they're afraid to say, oh yeah, that's <laughs> that's really good, honey. Um, <laughs> but like, someone needed to tell them. <laughs> it goes right on the fridge. <laughs> yeah, right up here. Right next to my son's drawing. <laughs> well, and it, it, the only reason why I'm thinking that, like, they're not too keen on actually revealing the full image of him yet, and they did this whole silhouette thing, is in an actual interview with the executive producer, they went ahead and said just flat out, uh, Sega wasn't entirely happy with the way they designed his face. Like, they made little changes to, like, the size of his eyes and other things like that to kind of fit it more into a realistic world. (laughs) And then every single promotional thing that they've done, they have not shown a full image of the character. Yeah, actually, I'm glad that you brought that up because that's something we need to bring up is the eyes, right? So in the silhouetted image, you can sort of see just the way that the light is bouncing off of it, like an eye sort of, I don't know how to say this. It's like cresting out or something. like It's sticking out a bit. Uh, If you're looking at the image, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. It, it doesn't look like Sonic's eyes, which I sort of understand that they have to make changes um, to it. I'm totally all about that. Like with the Pokemon trailer, I was fine with like the artistic changes that they made. But like, I don't know, the eyes look very freaky from my imagination. And maybe mm-hmm. that's just because I got the imagination. But I don't know. This is not the one, guys. Like, no, yeah. Sonic fans don't deserve this, you know what I mean? Like, even the self-hating ones that are, like, trying to trying to pull the one good thing out of a hundred terrible things and be like, no, it's still good, it's still good, like, the Simpsons thing, they, they don't deserve this. This is not, uh, this is not for anyone. No, like, I, I, actually, going back to that same interview with um, the producer, he, he said it would be weird and it would feel like he was running around in the nude if he was some sort of otter-like thing. Now... Like, just dial that back. It would be weird. Like, let me tell you a little something about weird, having a naked, furry, <laughs> blue humanoid. <laughs> let me tell you a little something about Sonic. I know. Like, come on, Tim. You you know what you're doing. And they got... And, like, there are some things that might redeem the movie. Like, they got Jim Carrey playing Dr. Dr. Robotnik. But, like, 
oh jim what are they paying you mate <laughs> like, oh god that sounds terrible though <laughs> yeah 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 uh, i'm sorry you use jim carrey and redeemed in the same sentence I'm, <laughs> oh no I'm no questioning no, this. Jim, like don't don't this is not the place to be shitting on jim carrey my childhood is jim carrey <laughs> I, you know what? He made a fantastic Riddler, but that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> Riddler? That's what you were okay. We're moving on. I can't. I can't even. I'm not entertaining that thought that you just put out there. Yeah, I'm. I'm saying I'm done here anyway. I'm done with Sonic. I'm done here. Remember, please send all of your hate mail to yes, right, Oni right. underscore Dino. No, at... no, don't do any of that. No. They already know where to send it. So before I sweep all this Sonic crap under the rug before it turns into another abomination and comes back out again like it will next week, assuredly, the uh, the second poster that we got that was also terrible was just like his extremely muscular legs and like the center uh, from the center point of view, which I'm just going to refer to as the dangle angle. It was pretty terrible. <laughs> I I had one of my friends on Twitter and he say, um, I hope the, I hope the entire movie shot from that perspective. Which yes, would just be it, it will make the movie so much better. I would watch it. I would watch it. <laughs> okay. It would be like that GoPro movie that came out a couple of years ago. I, I forgot what it was called, but it would just be that, but from that angle. Yeah. Okay. So then the third poster though that we got was this sort of yet to be confirmed image. I think it it seems mm. pretty real to me, but it's like. A, a small tiny sonic and it's his actual his actual likeness it's that actual figure it seems to be maybe a proof of concept poster that they released like a year before pre-production or something like that and it's a small sonic who's like maybe two and a half feet tall like 80 90 centimeters and his face looks weird but he still looks way more accurate and it's more like oh i can live with this i can live with this design which makes the mm -hmm first design and the real design that we're definitely seeing in the theaters it, it makes that so much more worse because it's like if you really were workshopping this design this was like leagues better than whatever you're going with for for the actual movie yeah so it i don't know like i just feel bad for sonic fans and they don't deserve it no no i feel like if they had if this was an actual poster that they had been as their announcement I would have completely different feelings about this movie, other than the ones that I do have. It just doesn't, yeah, like, it doesn't look as wrong. Like, it, 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 it's still, like, it's off, but it's still almost, like, cutesy off. It's not the worst thing in the world off. Yeah, yeah. Like, it can be disturbing and cute at the same time, and that's fine. Like, look at some of those Pokemon in the Pokemon trailer. Like, Jigglypuff looks a little disturbing, but, like, it's still cute, and it's, like, fine. But you can't be disturbing, humanoid, and then not be a horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I got my chili dog-flavored popcorn. I'm I'm ready. I'm ready to watch the fire burn. That sounds like the worst thing in the world. <laughs> well, I'm not going to eat it, just like I'm not going to watch the movie. Oh, okay. Hey, guys. Better luck next time. So I think, I really think that this, this movie is going to make our eyes bleed. And there's, there's almost something else here. The next thing we might talk about that might make our eyes bleed as well. <gasps> in a good way, though. <laughs> that would be some details that came out on uh, MK11. Not Mario Kart 11. We're talking about Mortal Kombat 11. <laughs> there was a, a retailer, I believe it was an Italian retailer, that uh, accidentally leaked some Mortal Kombat 11 details. Some interesting stuff came out referring to a new game engine, some new personalization options with gear and new move sets that haven't been seen before, which is personally interesting for me. Uh, accessories, stuff like that. There's uh, new fatalities, of course. There's a Gore-Tex system, which sounds like a, a Seinfeld reference. Uh, but I'm very intrigued to know what this Gore-Tex system is, and I won't be able to not think of Seinfeld with that. And then another very interesting part of the leak was that there's going to be like a very strong multiplayer component that's desi designated? Mm, no, designed. Designed toward eSports, which is, is weird sort of a weird description for me it sounds like you know we have a cinematic universe but we haven't even put out the first movie kind of situation for me what do you guys think about this news well first of all i wasn't sure if it was if it was real or not and then they put out um they, they use classics with a k i'm like yep this is real oh <laughs> uh, yeah yeah you know. there's also the combat pass with a k <laughs> yeah, exactly that's how you that's how you know it's real um you actually you put an interesting question in the show notes too like do you think that this could be a uh, to really turn into an esports kind of fight, uh, fighting game here, and will this kind of take off? And the thing is that Mortal Kombat, it's has that kind of history behind it, that, that legacy behind it. 
that it does. can help it get pushed towards being an esport. Like that's that's one of the biggest things mm. is that like for a new game really struggles, but for a pre-existing game with history, it does have that history there to kind of give it that push. But it does it needs that gameplay hook again, Scorpion pun intended. It needs that gameplay hook there to kind of pull you in. Um, and maybe it, maybe it has that with its extremely gory kind of thing that it's got going for it. And maybe extreme gore is its niche and is its hook and it's what it's got going for it. What do you guys think of that? I totally agree about that. Like, that's why I play Mortal Kombat is I, I need to see the gore and the crazy over the top kills. Like, it doesn't need to be super realistic. Of course, I don't think it should be because then it'll be a little bit uncomfortable, but it should be just over the top crazy, you know, pull a guy's arm off, shove it down his throat kind of thing. It's just funny. <laughs> <laughs> and you also mentioned that the game has cosmetics in it. I think I think you mentioned yeah. there, or was mentioned in the release anyway. Um, the cosmetics are huge today. Uh, it gives like easy produced content. Um, it's it's a lot of stuff for people just to unlock as they're playing the game. Um, and it's a reason for people to feel different and special when they're playing a fighting game like this. Um, and so like I think that's kind of a, just a big deal that will really help this game kind of get get its push into esports. Whether it can make it, it all depends on the mechanics and whether they work and and how far they refine that. But they, you know, they know how to make a fighting game. I'm sure they can probably do something with this. Mm -hmm. With those cosmetics, do you think that we're going to be seeing loot crates and loot boxes and everything like that with microtransactions? Absolutely. Freaking lootly. <sighs> yeah. <clears throat> Honestly, I, I, I feel that marketing this game as a potential eSport contender is false, not false marketing, but like a failed marketing ploy. Like, I, I feel like coming out and saying, hey, look at this game. It's going to be great as an eSport. People are always kind of going to want to look away from it and like you're trying too hard. I definitely agree there because I feel like when you push esports in front of people, they kind of they back away from it, going, "Okay, no, 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 no." But mm -hmm. when when e like if esports is natural, then an audience can rise up behind it and kind of get their body behind it and go, "Like uh, I'm into this game. Let's make it an esport. It deserves to be one." But telling people that this is going to be an esport. Like maybe maybe it's just my reaction, and maybe that's totally not the reaction from the people who actually adopt this as an esport. But for me, it turns me off of it. You know. Yeah, you you need to bring this up and make this organic. You need to organic like let the community kind of form around it and say, hey, we want to bring this game to a next level to show off our skills. That's the essence of like why esports even exists and are a thing nowadays. Exactly, fighting games of the past never actually. Like they weren't pushed as esports; they just eventually became esports, and so like that's where they, you know, that's their origins. And it's like only now that people feel like they need to try grab that esports angle to to get sales, and that's what it feels like. It feels like a sales technique. It feels like a way to grab people who exactly. want to get into esports and get their money, um, which is why I think it may feel a little bit dirty. And I mean, at, at the last Evo, they had Injustice and Justice Two as contenders in games that were played there was a fighting category for that and while it is not a mortal Kombat game it runs off of the same engine that the other mortal Kombat games have been using so take out your superheroes put in these bunch of iconic characters that have been around since like the original sega and the original super nintendo days and people know who these characters are people know what they're getting into when they have a mortal Kombat game and from an esports standpoint, there are people who are going to want to fine tune their, you know, their craft and show it off. That's naturally going to happen. Saying, "Hey, we're building our multiplayer around esports," it's it's redundant. Exactly. So I do agree with what you guys said about that, both of you. But considering it is Mortal Kombat and it does have that legacy, I feel like people are going to sort of give it a bit of a pass in that. So that's why they're being a bit bolder in announcing like. Oh, uh, we're we're going into esports with this game, you know, rather than being adopted into yeah. it. But I do agree that like if this was a new IP or like still a fairly fresh IP, that this would put a sour taste in a lot of people's mouths. But considering the legacy it has, I think it's going to get a pass on the boldness of the statement. Yeah, you're right. And then also some other thing I wanted to bring up with uh, the gear and the esports mentality of it. There's parallels between this and the Street Fighter V stuff that they've been doing recently, which has been, I think, mostly the, the very recent stuff with Street Fighter V has been mostly um, poorly received among fans, where there's a lot of mm -hmm. ads that are going to be, I don't know about mandatory. Mandatory is not the right word, but like definitely in pushed on 
to the consumer they can turn it off but then they make less uh i don't know fighter money or whatever it is i don't play street fighter 5 yeah but the, there's a huge thing behind that and so i'm wondering if mortal kombat is going to learn from what they're seeing you know right before them or if they're going to just end up doing the same thing and just being like deal with it i'm honestly going to be really interested to see what they do with that customization and what they do with that microtransactions because everybody knows it's going to have it and like you said other fighting games have done it and it hasn't been that well received i feel that fighting games as a genre has had trouble evolving due to the esports like not resurgence wow what word am i looking for here so just oh, the, the, the upcomings of yeah the popularity of just the esports concept as a whole i feel like a lot of companies are trying to do what they can to show this evolution and show this change in hey our fighting game is this unique of a fighting game because of x y and z but you guys are talking about x and y a lot so we're going to really focus on those two points you lost me with x and y yeah. i started thinking about pokemon <laughs> <laughs> that was my black and white reference earlier i'm going to leave my thoughts on that they re like they really want to be careful what they do with these microtransactions like we obviously know like totally. we've been talking about um, how many different ways they could kind of tackle this but gamers are more as a whole are more ready than ever to kind of stand up and rally against and and make a big deal out of bad microtransactions and so when you know mm -hmm. that can completely ruin a game's experience right from the start is if you have some sort of bad microtransactions so i think they're gonna want to have to keep their fingers on the pulse so to say yeah and we should also bookend this with saying that like microtransactions are not confirmed for this game right like all we know is that there's going to be like a battle pass and a combat pass so that could just be like extra fighters dlc which is pretty par for the course for fighting games these days i don't think that yeah. there's any confirmation of, of uh, microtransactions so we don't want to we don't want to you know no we're completely speculating here yeah. yeah speculation send all of your confirmation questions too no. <laughs> <laughs> you can go. something we won't be speculating about is uh, all of the crazy news that we got this week and really just in the last couple days on Travis Strikes Again, No More Heroes. So just over the past couple of days, we got word that there is going to be a live stream of the game and a quote-unquote huge announcement on December 20th. Then after that, we had a bunch of footage uploaded by several different people on YouTube that got the chance to play uh, a new playable demo of the game in some brand new areas that we haven't seen before with a couple of different modes that we haven't seen before as well. Then after that, Suda Goichi, the creator, he said he quote unquote definitely wants to port No More Heroes 1 and 2 over to the Switch if possible. And he even says that he and his um, production company Grasshopper is in talks with Marvelous, who co-own the IP, to see how it would be possible. So it kind of sounds like not if, but when sort of a situation, which is super cool. And then finally, Suda Goichi said that No More Heroes 3 is already outlined and already prepared, and he wants it to happen on the Switch. And he wants to make an amiibo of Travis while he's sitting on the toilet. And for those of you who have never played the games before, that's how you save in the game. So tons of news on on this series of games and it's super exciting what do you guys think about this news like wow i did like i must have missed so much of this news like i'm <laughs> sitting here and my notes are like uh, yeah travis isn't going to be in smash blah 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 um but like there's a huge dump of news that have just come out really recently about this game i, I think it's it's great of them considering the game is so close to launch now to be pushing all this other other stuff around it um and really kind of hyping it up but yeah wow i like first of all i'm looking forward to them boarding the old games i haven't played them and like that's i wasn't yeah. really gonna have much to say on this segment because i'm like i haven't played the old games i don't know what they're like but if they're coming if you know if they do eventually come over to the switch that's definitely definitely something i would pick up and, and take the opportunity while i can to play that and i'd hope they would get like a a physical collection of one and two oh, god i'd buy them separately if i had to because it's something that's, it's just like it's a missing link in my history of nintendo where i'm like i really wanted to try that game but never did but yeah like as far as we have the more stuff coming up i think it was on the 20th you said um with the stream mm -hmm. and everything i see a lot of people speculating that travis could be in smash now well, we wouldn't rule that out for the future and maybe some announcement for like the later stuff that's coming out it's not going to happen now because we're so close to that persona an announcement that they're going to exactly. be like okay let's continue hyping that up 
Let's let's not you know yeah. and let's not announce 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 and let's throw everything in December and then forget the rest of the year. You know they they're gonna want to stretch this out a little bit here. So don't expect Travis to to be in Smash. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. Like, why would you just continuously eat like McDonald's hamburgers one after another? Like, you need some rest time. Like, they're not gonna. They only have five <laughs> DLC fighters, right? They're not. They just announced one. They're not going to announce the next one like a week later. Like, we have to. We have to space this out over like two years. Oh, what is it? A year and a half that they said originally. I, I think it's a year into the year. Yeah. Okay. Um. And, and like, and kind of piggybacking on that, like, we're not gonna, yeah, we're not gonna see the announcement of the character, but we're also we're eventually gonna see the rest of the announcement on the persona on um, uh, the Joker. You know, we, he, we've only seen a little bit of mm. of Joker's character. We haven't seen anything like that. We haven't seen the actual proper trailer for him. And I bet they do one of those kind of, I bet they're still working on that. Like they're still probably in the early phases. So uh, my guess is that when we get to the January direct or, or somewhere around February, we, we will see that and we will see in two weeks time, you'll be able to play as a Joker. And then we will see the next character and they will push them out one by one. And they're not going to announce them, you know, eight months in advance. That's, that's not Nintendo style and certainly not with this. Yeah. yeah, I think it'll be every two to three months. Maybe we'll get like release and character announcement kind of thing. Exactly. And I'll say I'd be happy with that. I'd, I I would totally be okay if they announced Smash character. We're talking about Smash again. Um, if they <laughs> announced more Smash characters at about two month intervals. Like, I feel like that's a good turnaround time of try this character out, see how the community reacts, and then kind of go on for there. As far as the news in general, first off, I totally am going to get that at Travis Amiibo um yes yeah, that that needs to happen mm. <laughs> um personally i've played the first game i have not played the second game was a pretty big fan of the first game and i would definitely go and play it again so if they can make that happen bring it back to the switch i'm i'm game for that like that that rocks yeah that game is crazy it's it's just got so much personality it's like a it's like a classic inspired by Japanese anti-hero story, like the same kind of inspirational material that Quentin Tarantino loves, but it's like interpreted in a bit of a different mm -hmm. way. It's so over the top and so bloody and gory and yeah. like sexual. It just, it's fun. <laughs> it's so much fun. Yeah. To kind of jump back onto like the stuff that we might see on the 20th. First of all, I find it weird that we got all this information coming out. Like not that a lot of it's confirmed information. It's like the stuff you would like to do, but all of it coming out so close before the actual um, live stream that they're doing like why didn't they yeah. just save all this if you know they're hyping up this live stream to be some big news and i bet that the, the news that's going to come out of this live stream is going to be new t-shirts new heroes maybe or something like that some new gameplay modes and and and, and maybe they're going to talk more on on the physical and the season pass that, that seems to be mentioned before um so like i bet we're going to get that type of news and we're not going to get any of this stuff that's like we're thinking about the one and two collection and we're thinking about the the, the amiibo and stuff <laughs> like this which would have been like a really big deal for that presentation Right, right. I I want to totally expand on that because, okay, of course, prove me wrong, announce Travis for Smash. Prove me wrong, announce the HD yes. <laughs> ports of 1 and 2, announce the Amiibo, do all of this stuff as your huge announcement. However, dialing it back, being realistic about it, about our expectations, not getting disappointed because we blew stuff up in our head, like this, none of those things are probably going to be announced because they're just talking about it right now, right? So what's probably going to be the huge mm -hmm. announcement, which is probably hyperbole, is hyperbole, uh, or hyperbole, if if you want to be you know, <laughs> yeah. all of the hyperbole. Yeah. Oh god. <laughs> so if uh, if you want to be realistic about this, this huge announcement is probably just going to be details about like the season pass and like the extra content that's going to be coming out post launch. And speaking of which, just to remind people who are thinking about it. The game is, I think, 25 US dollars. It's under 30 at least. And then there's going to be a season pass according to the box art on the physical version. And we don't know how much that is or what that's going to really include except for a character and some stages. They'll probably give more details on that as their huge announcement, in my personal opinion. Yeah, I gotta agree. We should actually remind everyone when the game's coming up too, and which I should have in my notes. But I think it was the eighteenth of next month that the game is is coming out, isn't it? Yeah, that sounds about right. It's definitely mid January. That is right around the corner. Yeah, right around the corner. And the new game to me looks pretty fun. It's definitely a side story. It's definitely a smaller game. Like they said, it's going to be shorter, which honestly give me that because there's huge games and then there's little smaller games, and like I, I need to balance my time, right? I can't be constantly playing hundred hour mm. things. And uh, it's like a top-down hack-and-slash kind of thing. 
And I'm all about that. A lot of people have been saying, oh, the, the battle doesn't look too interesting or too fun. I, I mean, I totally understand that opinion. That's somebody else's opinion for sure. But it looks like hack and slash kind of gauntlet legends sort of thing. There's special attacks mm. in there. There's the wrestling moves. And, you know, so there's variety in there. So putting my expectations down a notch of being like, this is No More Heroes 3. It isn't. Uh, I'm like, cool. Bring me back to Travis's world. Let me hang out with Travis some more and see him sitting on the toilet to save. Like, I'm all about that life. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, just to quickly touch on, on what you said about the price as well. I didn't realize the price was was that low on it. Like, uh, to my, in my head, I yeah. just thought it was such a, I thought it was a higher price game. Like, it's going to be a full price game or at least close to. And so that's one, when I was looking at the gameplay personally, I was like, oh, it doesn't really seem that exciting. But now that I know it's like, it's meant to be a smaller title and it's meant to be the same, you know, just that type of $25 experience that I can just get into, mess around, more of an indie type fun experience, even though, yeah. And by the way, the date was uh, January 18th. I just double checked on that. Um, but yeah, like for that price, that is that is definitely something that I'm, I'm much more willing to kind of, oh yeah, I'll throw that out to give that a go and see what I think of it rather than a, than a full price game. So yeah, definitely thanks for clearing that up with me. Yeah, definitely. I think that that's something that maybe people aren't, they don't know about it yet, um, which is... <laughs> you know, a bit of a stain on the marketing for this game a bit, but it, it, I think since the beginning, it has been said that it's a bit of a smaller game, but they haven't really said like, okay, this is going to be, you know, 20 or 30 or whatever dollars. I think a lot of people probably assumed it was going to be a full price game or maybe a $50 game, something like that, but this is actually quite mm. a cheap game. So, you know, you have to put your expectations uh, middle of the road in terms of, I don't know, I don't know. I'm kind of dialing this back as I'm saying it. Because look at games like Hollow Knight and Shovel Knight where they're just full of content. Like, honestly, those games should be $60. Those games are crazy. <laughs> but, yeah, just I don't know, keeping expectations real and, you know, thinking about it for what it is. A top-down hack and slash. I'm down for it. That's me. Yeah, I think I'm down for it now as well. Galen? Oh, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, Have you been here? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> I, I, I am making sure that I have no more dog catastrophes, and yeah. <laughs> the last thing that we should definitely add here is um, people probably want to know the name of only your cat and, and Galen, your dog, so they have something to associate that background noise with. <laughs> you first, Galen. My dog's name is Bronx. I, I also have two cats as well, uh, Zatanna and Constantine. I have one cat. Her name is Boo. I often affectionately refer to her as Boo-chan. Oh, Boo. <laughs> That's so adorable. <laughs> well, I look forward to like hearing more about your, your cats and dogs and other animals in the future. <laughs> so we have a listener mail this week. If you have an email and you want to send it to two fools who talk about Nintendo, you can send us an email at nintendoeverythingpod at gmail.com. Eric, what's the email? That email is... Nintendo Everything Pod at gmail.com. Can we get Galen to say it three times so people like really get the idea? Wait, hang on. Did did you say Nintendo Everything Pod at gmail.com? That's there correct. <laughs> okay. Not 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 Yahoo, not AOL. Oh my god, it's stop. Nintendo stop. Everything you're, you're Pod. You're running it right now. No, 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 you <laughs> can't do this. <laughs> you can't. Firing him. We got an email from Garrett. Garrett writes. I just started listening to the podcast, and I know this sounds like a generic opening, but I really like it and I thought I'd ask you fellas a question or two. I've always been a big Banjo-Kazooie fan, and I think it broke all of our hearts a bit when Rare parted ways with Nintendo. There are varying accounts of what went down there, but I don't want to get into that. Oh, okay. I just want to know if you think Banjo-Kazooie will be released as DLC for the new Smash or not. Totally speculation because I could never have seen Joker coming. He then goes on to talk about slight spoiler stuff about rare created donkey kong characters in the new smash and he says i may be off but i understood those to be rare property maybe this indicates that rare and nintendo are cool again who knows anywho i just want to see banjo thanks guys love the show thanks garrett so to answer garrett's question actually i think that the donkey kong characters that rare created are still nintendo's property they they own the rights for it even though rare created it it's just part of the contract if i recall back mm -hmm. when this kind of uh this kind of discussion came up a couple of years ago i remember same thing with like king k rule rare created him but nintendo mm -hmm. still retains the rights so speculation banjo kazooie released as dlc character for smash what do you guys think 
Well, okay, so like it's definitely it's definitely possible, and like as far as the relationship goes, I think this is isn't this more of a relationship between um although like Rare may own the IP, it's more of a relationship between Microsoft and Nintendo that would see this coming over, considering mm. Microsoft owns Rare now, um can, compared to making that deal and striking that deal with Rare because like yeah, I, I don't think that they have all that much to do with it to be honest. So like whether this could actually come over there, we've seen a better relationship between the two of them now like they seem to be growing closer together and not but closer i mean they just don't seem to be competing with each other as more and seeing each other as friendly competitors and so mm. it's definitely possible i think that if we did see something like this happen um, as much as us nintendo fans would love to see uh, some rare characters come over um, and nintendo would probably like to see that as well i almost think that like with the way that minecraft's gone okay let's put that on every system we might see something more along the lines of minecraft guy you know coming on to coming into smash or something along those lines mm, yeah hmm. galen i i do actually think that we'll be seeing banjo kazooie on coming as one of the dlc characters i mean it uh, even though it is a rare property it is a very iconic nintendo character even with that said, I mean, talking about what we were talking about before, this game has been a huge tribute piece to the fans in general. And mm. seeing all the characters from the other IPs who are coming over, Sonic, Snake, it shows that there there's a pedigree to being on a Smash game that I think is going to lean very heavily in the favor of Banjo-Kazooie actually showing up. Yeah, absolutely. Like, Smash is taking mascots from everybody else. It's all going to Nintendo. It's very, very weird. Yeah. My thoughts on this uh, with Banjo Kazooie, I have no freaking clue, man. Like, I don't even know. Like, just with all the announcements of like things that fans are like, oh, this would absolutely fit in Smash Bros. and it needs to be in there, like King K. Rule, the Belmonts, those guys being announced, and then the out of nowhere on both ends of the spectrum of Piranha Plant and Joker from Persona Five. I can't even guess anymore. I don't know. I've paid my money to get on the the ride and just take me. Take me to the finish line. Let's go. I'm I'm down for everybody. Just <laughs> you look good, get in. You know? I don't even care. <laughs> so I hope Banjo's in it, but I can't even guess. I don't even know what's happening anymore. I oh, know, you're right. It's oh, yeah. it's so hard to kind of guess what characters could be in there with just anything being thrown in there. Um to, but to dial it back to Banjo and Kazooie, it's it's hard to to really tell because of one that reason, but also the reason like when you're mentioning with the, you know, they're working with everyone, every, like, it doesn't matter if you're a Sony character or whatever, you can get in on this game. Um, but in saying that, even like Persona characters, Joker is in a, is it, I think there's a game coming out uh, in yes. Japan at the moment that has, that has, a, I forget what it's called. It's Persona Q2. There you go. That has the Joker in it. Um, and as well as like, there's a chance that uh, Persona 5 could come over to the Switch. Um, mm. And so, there's there's always a chance that these games could make their way onto the switch um and that's why we could be seeing this character and other third and like obviously we've we've seen the other third party characters we've seen like final fantasy 7 is now coming to switch so obviously like there's still a tie between cloud there somehow uh, he was also in the theatrhythm games for the 3ds yes there you go so all these other third parties have some sort of tie there in the future not just the past now banjo and Kazooie we have a past there, like a really deep, rich history of, of them being in there from the past. But what's the future for those two? They're not, they're, their games aren't going to be re-released on Nintendo in the future. They're now a Microsoft property. Um, and so, like, the, by the push of putting them onto there, it showed, like, unless there was some sort of re-release of their old games on Nintendo somehow, what a Nintendo gaining from this, apart from, not, uh, I guess enriching their history and showing their history of these characters that aren't with them anymore yeah that's an interesting thought from like a business aspect of it hmm. i mean i don't think that that's prohibitive but that is an important angle to think about so yeah because i mean i don't know maybe microsoft is hoping to make another banjo kazooie game you know give it another shot because they've made a couple of games now and none of them have been particularly well received they've all been very mediocre if i recall correctly and mm. i don't know if it benefits Microsoft and if it benefits Nintendo, then, you know, on, on paper, then they'll do it, I think. This, and there's no reason that one day in the future, it, I definitely don't think it will happen. There's, there's no reason that you can't sell off IP. Now, they could, like, they might not ever get Rare back, but, that you know, Microsoft Monday might be like, well, Nintendo, if you want Banjo-Kazooie so bad, 
you can buy the, just the IP back off of us. It might be not be worth their money, <laughs> but like, who knows what type of deals are going on behind <laughs> behind the back door? So like, you know, it, that would probably be your best chance of get, getting something like this in the future. Is that if this ever did come back to Nintendo and Nintendo could announce that along with a Smash character and other stuff? I think you know, just spitballing silly ideas at the wall here, but I think that would be great. Yeah, I actually think so too. I don't think that that's realistic though, because. With like a Japanese conservative business like Nintendo, I really don't see them doing something like that, buying back something that once was theirs, sort of. They have their great platformer already too. Like, what what is Banjo Kazooie we adding to them? Um, that's what that would be like thinking in their head. Yeah, yeah. And like for us, the fans, like of course we'd love to see that, and they know, of course, because they're in in tune with fan response um, to some degree. Uh, they know that that would please fans and that they would get some good sales off of that. But they're a business, and they need to think of business decisions. <laughs> yeah, is there an untapped market? There isn't, is what I think. So, yeah, I, I totally agree with you, Eric. Yeah, I'm, I'm agreeing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I'm i going to stay optimistic on this one. I think that he will be showing up a little bit later, personally. Yeah, I hope so. We hope so, uh, Garrett. Yeah. I almost forgot your name. Thanks for writing in. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> so, before we close out the show let's just talk a little bit about what's coming up on nintendo everything on my side i have the ever elusive fantasy star mega interview that unfortunately had a little bit of a hitch thrown into the plan so it's taking just a tad bit longer than i expected just with some life stuff some you know podcast stuff really wanted to have it out this week but it's going to be just a little bit of a delay so as the great iwata said Please understand. As far as my stuff goes with Nintendo Everything, I've got one more video. Um, the one that I talked about last week, it's a Dragon Quest video on the demo. Um, that's all ready and good to go. It'll just be going up at some point before, I don't know, Christmas. <laughs> um, and that, that will be my last video that will be going up for Nintendo Everything. And then before I do go today, I just want to give mm -hmm. a big thank you to everyone um, because I'm not going to be doing one more video after this. I want to give a big thank you to everyone who's ever tuned into one of my videos, enjoyed one of my videos, listened to me on the podcast, taken any type of consumption of me in general. Um, I really appreciate anyone who gives me the time of day. So thank you for, for listening, watching. Thank you, Oni, for even taking this step with me in the first place. Um, I just want to also just mention that uh, because this was so like all of a sudden I, I wasn't planning on doing this as I said that I started this podcast with Oni and like I started doing all of this for Nintendo everything and so like I've put Oni in a hard position where like he had to all of a sudden realize that the podcast is no longer going to be with me and find someone else and, and I put Brian in, in the same um, same position with the video it's just kind of taking off so I appreciate everything that Brian's done for me uh, thank you so much no I we are really appreciative. and Galen thank you Galen <laughs> he's he's just a placeholder don't acknowledge him okay <laughs> yeah so that's my thoughts before i go thank you yeah we are very appreciative of all the things that you've done the podcast would not exist without you so much stuff on the youtube would not exist without you you've really not only made the foundation but like put everything into motion on so many things so really thank you from our side of things if you want to check out the youtube and you want to check out the awesome video that eric has coming up you can go to our youtube at youtube.com slash nin everything we also have a Twitter, which is twitter.com slash everything. You can also find me on Twitter at twitter.com slash, or however that goes, at Oni underscore Dino. And then Eric. You can find me and, um, and, and follow me if you'd like to know what I'm doing at Nintendo Numbers. Did I say that rightly? Yeah, at Nintendo Numbers. <laughs> and so we really want to thank Galen for being on the show today. It was a lot of fun. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And so we have a whole bunch more fun uh, planned for... Oh, God, how dumb does that sound, right? D stay tuned for fun. Like, is there a less <laughs> fun word than fun? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> no, no, no. You, you, you found it. <laughs> I think it's terrible, that word. So anyway, stay tuned next week. Galen and I are going to be on the podcast, and we're just going to be bouncing off of each other a whole bunch of things. I'm going to be sandbagging him left and right. He's going to try and steamroll me. He doesn't have the gas. Tune in next week, right? Yeah. So <laughs> on, a, on the last note, thank you again to Eric. Thank you so, so much. We will be talking to you sometime in the future somehow, hopefully on Twitter. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So for everything Nintendo, stay tuned to Nintendo everything. Bye. Bye-bye. Later. Uh -huh.